Good morning, folks. Being half asleep for today's top story isn't going to cut it, so I'll make sure we've got some interesting moments before the crescendo. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with a bright active region on the north, still sleeping, and on the south we can see the southern coronal hole extension beginning to reach up towards lower latitudes. Now while its solar wind is still five or six days from Earth, we are seeing currently the plasma stream calm considerably. It's settled into ambient quiet range in all telemetry points and so have geomagnetic conditions. Quick look at the storms that fired up in the states overnight. Numerous flood areas didn't need more rain, but they got it, and the storms that fired up on the east coast have taken out power to more than 100,000 people. Central U.S. storms firing up again on approach to sunrise will be a concern today. And meanwhile, Oceania is going to join the United States in the coming hours on storm alert. Both New Zealand and the west coast of Australia have the potential for strong storms to ride overhead. Eyes open there. Let's do two fun stories before we hit the hard science. First, it is a veritable Eden off the coast of South Africa. During the last glacial period, the sea level was lower and the land exposed there was vast, harboring an unbelievable number of animals and humans. Fun article, more fun topic to dig rabbit holes, linked below. Up next, it's corals fighting back in ways we never imagined. It's another nod to this planet's ability to cope with changes. Coral putting on a new display as a way to recover from environmental stress, including the attraction of a healthy coral microbiome. Part of this is the secretion of a natural sunblock substance, and the other part is the glowing of brilliant colors. Now let's go to space. KK246 is a diffuse galaxy, one of the 15 diffuse irregular galaxies like this known in space, but it is the only one settled in the local void, a nearby empty region of space. We've heard about X-ray and infrared uptick flaring from the center of the galaxy. Well, now ALMA is peering in to see sub-millimeter wavelength flaring. At this low emission energy, the flaring takes on periodic pulsations, and this is likely going to reveal more about the higher energy flares we've been hearing about from the galactic center. Folks, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille over at Sky Scholar Channel is in the midst of his cosmic microwave background examination. His latest on WMAP is slightly complex through the first half, but I truly challenge you to get through it. The last two and a half minutes ties things together and summarizes simply in a way anyone can understand. WMAP is largely a fantasy. Now, folks, for the top story. We've got the latest from Swarm, and after 10 years, we finally have a new percentage down of Earth's magnetic field. But it's not exactly what we were expecting. Based on the South Atlantic anomaly and the larger macro-scale global field, they estimate we're down about 9% in the last 200 years. Now, to be clear, that's magnetic excursion speed right there, but it's also bafflingly backwards. Here's the story. Back in the year 2000, a team determined that Earth had lost about 10% of the magnetic field since the 19th century, the 1800s. It was 10 years later in 2010 when the ESA updated that figure to 15%. That's a large jump in such a short time, and the head of the Swarm mission said we'd gone from losing 5% of the field per century to 5% per decade. This was confirmed just a few years later. The field loss continued at the current rate, and we're now somewhere down past 15%. And even today in 2020, their article is suggesting nothing has changed in terms of the weakening trend, and yet it has come back to us at 9% lost in 200 years. There is a major disconnect here. NASA, the ESA, the British, the French, the Chinese, and the Japanese were all on the same page for 25 years about the magnetic field changes until today. This is a continuation of the genuine info war. We've been seeing it for years on this topic. Berkeley puts out a story about how rapidly the pole flip could occur, and a week later MIT comes out saying the opposite and trying to quell fear. Interestingly, using that 9% number and their longer-term data still puts the reversal of magnetism on Earth this century, but it is the difference between our near-term future and our grandchildren's elderly years. The info war continues. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.